Hi, I'm Aaron, a developer advocate at Ditto. Today, I'm excited to introduce the public preview of the MongoDB connector for Ditto's Edge Sync platform. In this video, I'll guide you through the entire setup process, starting with preparing MongoDB Atlas for the connector, configuring MongoDB connector for the Ditto portal, and finally walk you through a demo mobile application built with SwiftUI to test the sync process between the two platforms. If you plan on performing the actions I'm doing in this video, you should have the following pre-requirements set up. One, a MongoDB Atlas account and a cluster set up. Two, a Ditto portal account set up. And three, you'll need to have MongoDB shell installed on your computer. We use the MongoDB shell to modify the collection in Atlas so that the Ditto connector can see the document changes. You'll find links to sign up for MongoDB Atlas, Ditto, and directions on to install the MongoDB shell in the video description, along with links to the code repository and the Ditto documentation. A full set of directions that I'm performing in this video can be found in the repo's readme file. With that, let's get started. The first step to prepare our MongoDB Atlas cluster for the demo application and the Ditto MongoDB connector. The preparation work can be broken down into four tasks. To start out with, we'll create two users, a user for managing the cluster with the MongoDB shell and one for the Ditto connector to use the sync information between Ditto and MongoDB Atlas. Second, we need to modify the network access list to allow both your computer and the Ditto cloud servers to access your MongoDB cluster. Third, we need to load sample data set into our cluster for the mobile app that we use in the test of sync functionality between Atlas and Ditto. Finally, we need to modify the collection using MongoDB shell so that the Ditto connector can see the document mutations in Atlas and react to them. In our first task, we need to create two database users. You need to log into the MongoDB Atlas portal to complete these steps. Once logged in, from the navigation menu on the left, we're gonna go through and select database access. Once the screen comes up, I'm gonna click the button to add a new database user. Now I'm going to fill in the form with the required fields. To start out with, I'm going to make a user for the connector. I'm going to call that user connector. Next, I'm going to type in a password for that user. Under the built-in roles, I'm going to select the button here and I'm going to change the role to be read and write to any database. Once I have this selected, I'm going to go through and click add user. You can see here now on the screen, my connector user has been added with the read and write permissions. I need to make another user in order to administer the database. We'll be using that user in the MongoDB shell in a future step. You need to make sure when you're adding this user that you select the built-in role Atlas admin and click the add user button. And with that, we have our two users created. Now that we have our two users created, let's go through and set up our network access. I'm going to use the network access link on the left here to bring up the network access screen. You'll notice that I have some information blurred out in the screen, and that's simply because it has my personal IP address on that and for security reasons. I'm going to click the add IP address button in order to add a new IP address list access rule. You'll be asked to fill out an IP address in the access list entry, which I'm going to go through and select from the documentation in the code repo that I've linked in the video description. And in the description, I'm going to use the same IP address with the word dash ditto on it to keep track of this so I know that these are the ditto IP addresses. Once I have this information in, I'm going to click the confirm button and it should show up in the list. I'm going to follow this for the other two IP addresses that can be found in the code repo directions. With our IP addresses added, now I need to add the sample data so that my mobile application can use it to display information. To add the sample data, I'm going to navigate back to the cluster screen. From the cluster screen, I'm going to use the little ellipse icon to bring up the menu here and click the load sample data set. I'm going to go through it and now click the load sample data set button. Note that this can take several minutes, so I'll fast forward through the process. 
Now that my sample data is loaded, I'm going to use the connect button to get the connection string that I can use in MongoDB shell so I can modify the collection so that Ditto's connector can see the data as it mutates. To do this, I'm going to use this screen here and click the shell option and this should give me a connection string that I can use to connect to my cluster. Note, you're going to notice that part of this screen is blurred and this is simply because of the fact that I am trying to protect my MongoDB cluster from any hackers getting access to it. You can use the little icon to copy this to your clipboard and then paste it into your terminal, which you can use then to launch the MongoDB shell. I have my shell open now. I'm gonna use this to paste in, replacing the DB username with my DB user that I created. Now that the MongoDB shell has let me in, I'm gonna go through and copy from the code repo the command I need in order to change the collection. This command goes through and modifies the collection so that it will listen to pre and post mutations, the information changing in the collection. The OK command came back, which means this command has ran. Now that we have the collection modified, we can go through and start setting up the MongoDB connector in the Ditto portal. In our next step, we need to log into the Ditto portal. I happen to be logged into the Ditto portal already and have my app selected called Connector. You'll notice that some of the information on the screen is blurred for security reasons to protect my app ID and my token for authentication. From the main Ditto portal screen, select your application. Once you have it selected, click the Settings tab. Now that the Settings screen has appeared, click the MongoDB Connector link. Here, we need to go through and configure the MongoDB Connector by clicking the Configure button. For database name, we have to type in the database name that we're gonna use for our data set. We also need a connection string for the MongoDB driver to put into this box. We can find both pieces of information from the MongoDB Atlas portal page. I'm gonna use the clusters link to go back to the main database clusters page and then use the connect button in order to get a string that I can use for the MongoDB connector. I'm going to click the drivers option and then copy the driver information from this screen that I can use in the Ditto portal. Now that I'm back in the Ditto portal, I'm going to use the database name sample guides as this is the name of the database that hosts the information about planets that my mobile app uses. Next, I'm going to copy and paste the connection string into this box, changing the username and password to the user I created earlier for the connector. Now that the connection strings in, I need to click the add collection button in order to add a collection. In the collections name box, I'm going to add the planets collection in. And you can see here, we need to map IDs. I'm going to use the map ID fields and I'm going to make the field name planet ID. We'll go through and add the planet ID field later in a script. I'm going to click add collection to add this collection. Now that I'm done, I'm going to go through and click the save button. This should go through and save the changes and start the connector. Now that my connector is set up, I need to modify the data set so that the MongoDB connector can see my data. I'm going to use the same MongoDB shell that I had open previously in order to modify my data using a script from the code repo. I'm going to copy the script from the code repo, you can see here, and paste it into my shell. This script goes through and modifies each document adding a field called planet ID if that field does not exist and also adding another field called is archived that I use for soft deletes in the mobile application. Links to information about the soft delete pattern can be found in the video description. Now that I've modified the JSON data, let's go through MongoDB and validate that the data is there. From the MongoDB clusters page, I'm gonna use the collections link here to go through and get to the collection to take a look at the data. I'm gonna click on the planets collection and you can see here is Mercury and we now have a field called planet ID and another field called is archive, which is set to false. 
Now that we've validated the data is actually there, we can now open the mobile application and try it out and have sync work between the mobile application and MongoDB Atlas. I'm gonna launch Xcode on my computer and open the guides from the repo that I downloaded. A reminder that a link to the repo can be found in the video description. Now that the repo is open in Xcode, I need to make one small change in order to run the application. There is a file called ditto config and it's a plist file. This file has the app ID and the authentication token needed in order to connect this app. We need to change the values of those in this particular file. To do this, I'm gonna open the file and change the values. As you can see here, it's currently blank. I'm gonna modify those with the settings from my app settings in the ditto portal. Note that you're gonna see that the app ID and authorization uh, token are both currently blurred out. This is for security reasons. Finally, I'm going to take the endpoint URL and take that from the portal settings and copy and paste that in. This is provided in the auth URL. With these three things set, I can now save this file and I'm ready to debug. To debug the application, pick a simulator of choice. I'm gonna pick the iPhone 16 Pro Max and click the run button. I'm gonna open the MongoDB portal and make sure I have it opened along with my simulator so I can see both on the screen at the same time. I'll note once the app opens, it does take a few seconds to hydrate. We can see now the app is running and the data is coming from MongoDB. To test this, we can go through and change data in MongoDB and see the data changing inside the simulator. I'm gonna start by changing the temperature, the minimum value that we see here for the planet Mercury. To do this, I can go into MongoDB and click in any of the fields and change the value. Currently the value is 173, I'm gonna change that value to be 181. Click the update button, and we should see that instantaneously the mobile app has changed its data by changing in MongoDB. Now that we saw the data change, we should be able to use the mobile app to change the data to something else. So I'm gonna click on Mercury once to get the editor open. This will allow me to change fields inside of it. I'm gonna go back to that minimum temperature and change the value to be something else. I'll change it to be 100 and click the save button. Now mutations don't instantly show up in the MongoDB portal. In order to do this, you have to click the refresh button. I'm gonna click the refresh button and look to see if the uh, changes we see now are there. When we look here, we can see now the minimum value says 100, which is showing us that the changes are happening between MongoDB and the mobile app in real time. Now let's go through and add a new plan to see whether or not we can add new data from the mobile app and have it show up in MongoDB. To do this, I'm gonna click the plus sign, and this is gonna bring up a form. I'm gonna fill out the information for the planet Pluto, which was demoted from being a planet. I'm gonna go through my notes here and add in the chemical structure for the atmosphere, which happens to be a combination of uh, carbon monoxide and a couple other things. And I'm gonna go through and add the min-max temperatures, which is gonna be set here. I'm gonna click the save button, knowing that I've made a mistake. When I click the save button, you'll notice that Pluto instantly shows up next to Mercury. And if I were to hit the refresh button, we'll now see that I have nine documents instead of eight documents with Pluto being the new planet there. However, there's a bug here. Pluto should be the ninth planet. So I'm gonna click on it again and edit it to show that it's the ninth planet and click save. And what this shows me is that my select statement that I have with the order statement is working properly as I changed the order of the, the planets from the sun. You can see now that Pluto is showing at the bottom because it's now number nine, where when it was one, it was with Mercury, and that's wrong. Now, Pluto was recently demoted as a planet. And so because of that, I wanna show off the soft delete feature in, that we have. Remember I added that field is archived. Well, what happens in this mobile app is if I slide out and select the delete option, as you saw there, it should soft delete the application. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means if I refresh, we look at the field, we should see that the field is actually set for is archived to be true. How the mobile application works is that there's a subscription on it 
And basically what happens is if that field is set to true, then we don't need the document anymore. So our select statement that we use for getting the data is based on this archive field being false. The beautiful thing about this is that the document still lives in Big Peer and in Mongo, and now I can make the decision when I wanna get rid of it. To show this off, I can go into the portal, click collections, click on the planet view, and I can go through and see that there is my Pluto data, even though it's no longer in the mobile app. And if I want to see the full JSON data, I can just click on this and see that here we have the is archive equal true. If I wanted to get that data back, I can just set it to be false again, and that would go through and do it. So if I were to go back here and update it to be is uh, from there, I'm going to do it for Mongo instead. I'm going to go into Mongo here, set this back. So let's go through and edit it and say that this is set to false again. Click the update button. You'll see Pluto showed up again. So the soft delete gives you the flexibility of making the decision when you want to have your data go through and re remove itself from Ditto, both the mobile app and from Big Peer, and have it still live inside of Mongo. Now, finally, if I wanted to get rid of the document altogether, I could delete it from either in Mongo or Big Peer, and it would delete from everywhere. So to do this, I can just hit the delete key right here to remove this document, and this is Pluto, and confirm the delete. And if I go, you'll see that the mobile app instantly deleted it. And now if I go back to Big Peer and actually go through and refresh this page, we should see that the, the Pluto, Planet Pluto is gone. So let me go ahead and run the query again, and you'll see that Pluto no longer shows up. And that's my demo for showing off the MongoDB connector between the Diddle portal and a mobile application with MongoDB Atlas. I want to thank you for watching the video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.